we chase things that are invisible. Yeah. And love is invisible. Yeah. Peace, joy. But you want love, but are you lovable? You mm. want peace, but are you peaceful? Ooh. You want joy in your life, but are you joyful? <laughs> What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of It's Giving. It's giving. It's giving. I am your host, Sarah Fontenot, and today I am joined by, first of all, he's crazy incredible. He has the best energy ever. He's retired from the NFL. He is, oh my goodness, an author. He's a motivational speaker. He's a father. I mean, it's giving all the things, okay? We are joined here today from the one and the only Stevie Bass. <laughs> What up? <laughs> Give me some love. Listen, so I got I to correct you oh, now. Oh, oh. So you forgot actor. Oh, you forgot Country entrepreneur. Wayne skits. By no, way, no, you, not, no, not no, aside no, from let Country me, Wayne. Let me just Hold say on. Country Wayne. Wait, wait, wait. I got to say. Okay, say. go ahead. He is on a syndicated, syndicated TV, okay? Not just TV. <laughs> like, but you are on TV. You got movies. And you actually have your own show on Tubi right mm -hmm, now. Absolutely. I mean, I, I could just put a little sprinkle out there, a little razzle. Well, you know, I just wanted to get the people the full oh, spectrum oh, yeah, yeah. of what's uh, going on. My, let me check me. Okay. Let me. Let well, me you, you got it. Let, let the people know. Who are you? Well, no, no, seriously. I, I, I'm so thankful to be here, Sarah. And, and you know, <laughs> doing whatever we do in life yes. is important. But what's most important is how you impact people yes, with what you on. do. And so... I have a question for you. I know you're going to ask me some questions. Yes. I love the name. It's giving. Why it's giving. in the world did you name your podcast It's Giving? Oh, my goodness. You know, I, I, I feel like I'm so all-encompassing inside of the ways that I think. Like, I'm totally, you know, we're the same. Don't put us in a box. Mm -hmm. You know, the way that we think, don't put us in a box. And so it's giving all of the things. Therefore. And it's all of the different pathways to get to healing. But there's no one way, mm -hmm. right? It's like, it's like religion or politics. There is no one way. It's Absolutely. just what way is most in alignment for you. Yeah. So I'm really curious to know, and actually this is one of my questions for you, is that if you could title this chapter of your life, it's giving blank, mm. what would this chapter of your life be? And you have to say it's giving. Oh, I love that question. Uh, well, I'll, I'll answer the question, but then I want to put the car in reverse and go back to okay, something real okay, quick. Okay, okay, okay. So if I, were, if I were to say, say something about this chapter, this season, mm -hmm. I'd say it's giving evolved. Oh, come on. You know, it's giving transcendent. Oh. Those are those are the words that that will resonate with me right now. And when I when I put the car in reverse, I put it in reverse because you and I have known one another for a very long time. Yes. You know, of course, I played in the NFL and CFL. Yes. And, you know, to see your evolution, to see your growth. Thank you. And it, it's just a beautiful thing. And so I want to tell you, uh, I know my own interpersonal growth. Right. But when you can see growth in, in friends and family and people that you're connected with. It just lets you know, and that, you, and then you all are still on the same wavelength, right? Mm. It lets you know that your vibe is your tribe, and yes. your tribe is your vibe. So, kudos to you, salute to you, and, and keep doing what you're doing, beloved. Thank you. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited. Okay, yeah. I gotta ask you because you always say beloved. <clears throat> Why? And where does that come from? Well, beloved to be loved is to be loved by the Creator. Mm. So, so you know, everybody wants love, but you have to be loved before you receive it. Mm. Everybody wants what they're not. You know, a lot of people want things that they don't have yet. The only reason you don't have what you want is because you're not what you want. But we chase things that are invisible. Yeah. And love is invisible. Yeah. Peace, joy. But you want love, but are you lovable? Mm. You want peace, but are you peaceful? Ooh. You want joy in your life, but are you joyful? So it's like those are the things to me that are very important for people to start to recognize everything to me. I have to be. So yeah. if I if I'm calling you beloved, it's because I love myself. Yes. And I just want I want you to see the love that the Creator has for us all. So beloved. Sheesh. I mean, it's it's giving evolution. <laughs> that's what, that's, <laughs> what, that's, what, that's, what, that's what that's what it's about. Ooh, you know, we, you yes. know, you can't. You know, if we if we're still doing the same things, and and having the same results, yeah. And then we're wondering why there's no growth, yeah. then we, we got to start, we got to start looking in the mirror, doing Period. some inventory. Yeah. You know, I always tell people, Sarah, that the most important words in the English language starts with I-N. Yes. Intellect, intimacy, integrity, mm -hmm. insight, insecurities, mm -hmm. right? Uh, information. Mm. A lot of people look without, but they never look within. Within. You know? Yes. And so when you start to look within and you're doing that inventory, it, you would only be a fool to not say, hey, you know what? Let me start to recognize what I need to do to change my outcomes. Yes. Because my input is going to determine my output. Yeah. 
So I think we have it in reverse. Mm. We've been taught to taste, touch, see, smell, and hear. Those are all external senses. Yes. And so we, we don't pay attention to the internal, intuition, discernment, and clairvoyance. Yes. When we do that, it gives us an opportunity to then, well, you know what? If, if I'm getting these types of results, maybe I need to change my circumstances. Maybe yes. I need to change my mindset. Maybe I need to change my behavior. Yes. Maybe, you know, my habits and the people I'm around. And I think that one thing that you said, because I thought what you were going to say is instead of taste, touch, see, feel, all of these different, the five senses, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I thought you were going to talk about emotional feeling, mm -hmm. but feelings are not facts. We know that. Exactly. We know that. For, and I've actually, I was just watching a video of you talking about how feelings are not facts. And if you, it's separate from intuition and clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. It's separate from um, that. There's like that thing inside of you. I personally think that it's the, it's the, the barometer in which you own yourself, your own integrity. Right. Like, I feel like that is the, the clairvoyance because there's some things that other people do that I'm just not going to do. And right. not because I'm better or worse. I'm just different. Right. And I'm not going to chastise you. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to make you wrong for you doing you. But over here, I don't do that. Mm. I don't partake in these certain things because of my own integrity with self. Right. And I do feel like a lot of the times we as a people... We have to be so intentional to not allow our feelings to be the thing that determines how we move and shake inside of this life because feelings are fleeting, right? How, how many times have we been like, oh, I'm in love. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so in love. I'm so okay right now. But right. do you really like this person for real? Right. Or is it just how they make you feel in that moment? I don't, that's, re that's really good. Clairvoyance and intuition. That's good. Yeah, and discernment. Those Ooh. are all invisible. That's senses. God right there. That, that's but so that if we're made in the image and likeness of the creator, yeah, then we have to start resembling those types of behaviors. Yes. Right. And, and in order for to me, in order for me to get to a place where I was I was elevating, I had to first sit still. Mm. You can't you can't elevate before you're grounded. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the times the noise keeps us distracted. Yeah. The 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 the, the um the, all the all the misinformation, all the different uh energy that we encounter yeah. can keep us distracted and distraction comes before destruction. Ooh. So when I'm grounded, now I can, I'm grounded enough to be able to make a decision in the present that, that benefits my future and I can look back. I don't have to go back to mm. my past, but I can look back. Because yes. sometimes we forget what we achieved back there. Yeah. And like, like, even though I look back, I still don't have to go back. But I can hold up. I did. I, I did overcome that obstacle. Yes. And that brought me here to the present so I can appreciate the present yes. and I can make a different decision, a better decision for my future. Yes. I, yeah. I love that. I was just watching a service. Shout out to Pastor Darius Daniels. Um, and he was talking about exit strategies. And he was talking about how in the Bible, and not to get super biblical or spiritual, but I, there's so many... Uh, most principles come from the Bible. Just mm -hmm. most motivational speakers, inspirational teachers, thought leaders, leadership teachers. Most of the principles come from the Bible, right? There's some good stuff in there. Absolutely. And so he talks about how in the Bible, the only book, there's an entire book written about exits and it's Exodus, right? Mm. And then he talks about there's no other book in the Bible that talks about entrances. It's only exits. Mm. And so inside of that, it's crazy because a lot of us as a, as a, um, Oh, I totally lost my train of thought. Dang it, it was going to be so good. No, but but at the end of the day, the Bible is stated truly, but it's not truly stated. Yes. And we only get... That part, because it's know, people. Right. And we only we only get the truth based on our exposure and our experience. Yeah. All, all of our individual truths are based on what we've been exposed to. Yeah. So that I always tell people, if I'm looking at a, a six and you're looking at a nine... They're both right. Right. Depending but, on your vantage you're gonna, point. You're going to argue with me till you're blue in the face. I won't. That the typical person would. Yes. The average would. person is going to argue what they've only been exposed to. Oh, my goodness. You, you know what I mean? But that's why I don't say it's three sides to a story. Your side, my side, and the truth. Mm -hmm. I say it's your truth, my truth, and the facts. Ooh. Your truth is the six. My truth is the nine or vice versa. But the fact is that it's a number. Period. And what that number to you, how it appears to you is based on what you've been exposed to. Yes. And it's not until I get out of my own level of a box, if you would, right. to come around to your perspective. Oh, I do see the nine. Yeah. You're like, oh my goodness, Stevie, I do see the six. And now, even though I can take the meat and leave the bones or stand on what I'm convicted on, yeah. I can still see your, your perspective. Yes. And the most intelligent people on the planet, I think, are people who can disagree on ideology, 
but still be able to take the meat oh, and leave the bone. Yes, and, and that's the thing. It's the meaning that we give to something. Mm -hmm. There's a really great book called The Course in Miracles, right? Mm -hmm. And inside of The Course in Miracles, the very first part is for you to say, nothing has meaning. And not in some diabolical, dark way, but when you start saying, like, my car, the type of car that I drive, it means nothing. The TV that I have means nothing. The bed that I'm sleeping in means nothing. These mics mean nothing. Literally, it doesn't mean anything except for the meaning that you get it. Absolutely. So in a, in a sense, it's like, you know, you drive the Rolls Royce or the big truck or the Prius or whatever it is that you choose it doesn't have a meaning but society has given it a meaning and that's what we have all bought into yeah right and so we have to be mindful and careful of whose story we're even subscribing to because a lot of us subscribe to things that we actually don't want for our lives no absolutely like at all what what because of the program the systematic conditioning, the manipulation. Yes. Right? And so, But I have to pause you. Okay. Because I just did a video, and I want to talk about this video because you did the same podcast. Okay. I did a video on Hardly Initiated, mm -hmm. and I talked about manipulation. Mm -hmm. And manipulation has a negative connotation, but it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Right? It's the same thing with the six and the nine. It's the your truth, my truth, right. and, and the fact. Right? Manipulation itself is not a bad thing. But back to you. So, what see? Is being planted because the hardest thing to do is to get rid of seed that's been well planted in the brain. Mm. So now, if I'm manipulating for quote unquote righteousness or yeah. if I'm manipulating for darkness, yeah, and that's also relative to someone's perspective. Mm -hmm. But I think that you can you can you can better distinguish right versus wrong as mm -hmm. opposed to righteous mm. versus wrong. Mm. Like I like and there's a lot of things we do right now that you can distinguish righteousness before other than just being right. Yes. And, 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 and I don't want to dig into it because it's, it's some low-hanging fruit that I can go to that people will cancel you for. So I just want to <laughs> say this. I just want to say, which is, which is also, to me, crazy, that you can't speak out truth against certain things without being, being canceled or blacklisted, right? Yeah. And so that lets us know that there's a manipulation. Yeah. There's a conditioning that's going on. There's a program that's going on that uh, goes against, quote-unquote, Righteousness yes. or nature. Yeah, I find I find most righteousness in nature because mm. nature nature is it undefeated. Just is. You fall off this building, you might not want to call it gravity, but you coming down. Period. You, you you the leaves that fall from the tree are the same fruit or food for that tree to create the same leaves the next season. Yes. But we don't understand that. You go to the ocean, that, that tide is going to go back and forth yes. without your opinion. Yes. The sun. Yeah. Right. And, and you go. So when you go to nature, you're able to see. Uh, a non-biased energy. Yeah. It's going to happen regardless of our opinion of it. Yeah. Right? And so I think that when you when you have a manipulation and conditioning and programming, though, depending on that program, that's going to determine, once again, what, you, what your output is. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And this is the thing. This is why, for me, it's so important. And let me know what you think. But it's so important to be surrounded by people that understand who you are, or at least are okay with you being who you are. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the times, one of the biggest manipulations is planting those seeds of who you're supposed to be, mm -hmm. who other people are telling you should be, the job that you're supposed to have, the success you're supposed to be after, the relationship you're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what actually makes sense for me? And what I've found is when I get around people that don't necessarily know who they are all the way, mm -hmm. or I get around people that don't understand how I move so freely, because one thing about me, I'm going to hear what you have have to say but again it goes back to integrity with self if right. what you're saying to me is out of alignment with what I believe to be true what I'm hearing from God thank you for the awareness thank you for what you have to say but I'm not doing what you tell me and that is really offensive people get offended yeah. when you don't act the way that they want you to act. absolutely they, yeah. they and they attack and they do all of the or they project or whatever it may be there are a lot of different things that can happen but it's wild to me how um, you know when you really know who you are and you are grounded inside of who you are and you know whose you are right you're tapped into source I really and truly feel like it's 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 like the matrix it's literally like now you got that nasty slop that you got to eat every single day and it's the like your eyes are open but you almost wish you didn't see it mm. you know mm. and unless you're around other people that understand understand right. the matrix right well, well you know we I'm, I'm into words and etymology as you know I'm yeah. always talking about the power of words yes. and conscious language yes. and so when you say matrix you're talking about a womb you're talking about being birthed into something Ooh. so what are you being birthed into are you being birthed into a, a society or an establishment that is based on something like I, I go back to righteousness because to me we're all suffering from STDs 
Oh. Spiritually transmitted diseases. Ooh. The, the Run spirit, that back. Yeah. STDs are spiritually transmitted diseases yeah. because the spirit has a disease on it because of the, the thing the things that have been planted in our mind and our hearts, the things that we've been birthed to, the matrix that we're in. Yeah. And so once again, the body, the mind, the spirit will heal itself if it's put in a better environment. Mm. Right? So once we start to unlearn and relearn, then we start to have change our habits, like we talked about earlier. We start to change the people that we're around. Yes. We start to sit still so we can hear from Yah. We can hear from the Creator as opposed to listening. Yeah. Because when you sometimes when you're listening, you can't really hear. Because mm. to me, when you hear something, it's more like you're in, able to ingest it, mm. and now you're able to make it functional in your life as opposed mm. to just listening. Yeah. I was silent. Silent and listening have the same letters. Mm. If you're silent, you're listening, you're listening, you're silent. But you can be listening but moving. When, you, when you're sitting still, you got to hear. Yes. And when you hear something, that goes into the heart. That's why the heart is here. Yes. And, the, and the word heart is here. Mm. Because if something goes into your heart, that means it really it really was planted there. You heard And it. now you really got to go make a decision. Am I going to stay in the same place that I was in? Yes. Or am I going to make a new? Yeah. Am I going to be renewed? Yes. Am I going to be restored, transcended, evolved to the person and the information that I was just able to receive? Yes. Money ain't power, Sarah. Education ain't power. Information is power. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to go within. The, 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 if, if I give you Good information, you're going to display good power. Yeah. If I give you bad information, you're going to display bad power. No matter how powerful you're, you're chosen to be, if the information that you're given is wrong, this is how I look at melanated people, especially melanated people in America. You're chosen. Everybody on the planet follows you. Yes. I went to speak in South Africa, and I seen a brother with grill, a grill in his mouth and sagging his pants. You did not get this from the village. <laughs> you got this from us. <laughs> right. You know, because we control the narrative. When you go to Japan, you see K-pop. You see these people mimicking what we do here yeah. in America, the yeah. melanated person in America. Yeah. We just don't know our chosenness. Mm. And once we find out that we haven't been called, it's a difference between being chosen and called. That's a lot of people get on stage and say they're called and to do something. But if you ain't chosen to do it, Ooh. that's a different vibe. I, well, I was chosen. Ooh. You were chosen. And it gives you chills when you really know Yes. That you're chosen because now your opinion of me doesn't matter at all. It's not even my your opinion of me ain't none of my business, whether it's good or bad. Oh my goodness! Right? If you take 100 percent of the people on the planet, 25 percent of those people will love you, but can't be persuaded to hate you. Mm -hmm. 25 will hate you, but can't be persuaded to love you. You got 25 percent of the people, sis. You can save their child from a burning building. They are gonna hate you no matter what you do. Yeah. And then 25 that's gonna love you no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. You can be dead wrong. They they on your team. Period. But guess what? What that shows me is that in my life, I never please everybody. Oh, never. I only have to please my purpose. Yes. And I only got my purpose from my creator. Yes. So when I look at it like that, it puts me even more in a position to be convicted in what I'm grounded on. Yes. Not just because there's a difference between believing in something and knowing something. Yes. I don't have faith that Yah is real. I don't believe that Yah. Or the creator is real. I know it. Mm. See, you only have faith in things that you don't know. Mm. It's just like, well, like I said, when you, you find the creator, you find the power of, uh, of the universal source when you fall off a building. Mm -hmm. Because that gravity is a universal law. You've fallen down. So whenever you find that, something that's inarguable, mm -hmm. that's what you know. But I, I think the thing is, for me, and mm -hmm. I had to have the realization too, I feel like all of us are chosen. But only few choose to acknowledge it. Mm. That's what I feel like. Literally, the day that we came onto this planet, God chose you out of the mm. 400 trillion sperm to go into a seed, mm. to create a baby, to create a person. Every single one of us were chosen to be here, but only few choose to I acknowledge agree. it. I agree. I uh agree. -huh. But what are you chosen for? Well, See, you so, got to so, figure that out. But then that's so it's many. individual, but you're still chosen, period. So in the inside of purpose, mm -hmm. I think we all have a purpose. Yes. Right? But... Inside of being chosen, like there's only a few, there's only selected people on the planet who hair grows up to God. Everybody else hair grow down. Yeah. There's only a few people on the planet who heal from the sun. Yeah. Everybody else gets killed from it. Yeah. Okay. There's a few people that jump higher than everybody on the planet, <laughs> but we need to elevate our thinking. Right. You run faster than God himself on the football field, but when you run your spirit. Yeah. So we all know who's yeah. chosen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, like, let's be, so yeah, it's, it's good and it's boom, 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 but every other culture. This is my this is my summation. Every other culture is waiting on melanated people, especially in America, to step into their appointed place. Yeah. As being chosen people. And in and, and, and what I study, 
the tribe of Yehuda, which people say Judah, we are we are not walking in our rightful place and in our rightful order. Mm. And I'm not mad at anybody about it. The best speech I'm gonna give is the life I live. Mm. Because if you wait, live, you gotta pause. <laughs> talk we, to we, me. we gotta pause right there. <laughs> The best speech I'm going to give is the life I live. Yo, leading by example. That's it. Because you know what? There's too many people out here that talk about it but are not about it. Yes. Like it's literally just lip service. Mm -hmm. And you see it. But I also feel like you feel it from those people. That's what I was about to say. Oh, man. You, if you're not genuine, like Ooh. when someone sees you, hears you, feels you speak, they know if it's coming from a genuine place. Every single time. Or if it's manufactured. Every single time. So... The it only, might take a minute to figure it out. Yeah. Well, if they don't, if they're not in alignment, if they're not grounded, they're not able to leverage the discernment to see that. Yes. But if you are in alignment, you're like, you know what? That's just the solid. Ooh. Man, God, Lane, I mean, that brother's speaking some truth. Yeah. And even if they, even if this person doesn't resonate with what I do holistically, I can take the crux of what they're saying yes. and leave everything else. Yes. Right. But once again. A sign of, of unintelligence to me is if we disagree on one thing that we can't agree on anything. Yeah. Like someone will hear a soundbite from this podcast yes. and disagree with something that I say. Yes. Even though they agree with other things that I say. Yeah. So to me, that would be a sign of unintelligence yes. for you to do that. And then also make you out to be the villain for f saying or feeling how you feel. <laughs> it's like that one quote on social media that says something along the lines of, I really love mangoes. And then in the com in the comment section, it's like, well, what about bananas? You don't love bananas? Exactly. Hey, you're discriminatory against strawberries. You need to know, like, yo, chill out. Right. I'm allowed to speak what I, I can prefer. Be, I can be I can pro, I can be pro something without being anti, anti something, something else. else. Yes, absolutely. I, absolutely. And what we live in a world right now where I think it's I think mental awareness mm. should be changed to mental weakness. Okay. Pause. Go Pause. <laughs> we gotta stop. <laughs> Please run that back. What yeah. did you just say? I think that mental awareness, this mental awareness Yo, movement. I, I, Go I ahead. have to pause again Go ahead. because I feel like there's a this inter, we, you gonna have to watch this interview a couple times, okay? <laughs> because he's saying so much in sound. You're saying so much in sound bites. It's up, sis. Oh, it's geez. up. And it, it, and it's, it's giving evolution. No, it's, 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 evo it's evolution. It's evolution. Yeah. Because because you know what? I had to do the inner work. I had, I, and I'm still still doing the and inner work. And we always will be doing you have the inner to, work. Because healing always. healing is not a destination. It's, it's a, a journey. journey. Period. It never stops, and we never arrive. Detoxification. Yes. With your body. Yes. When you talk about cleansing. It's a journey. It's not yes. a destination. Mm -mm. Because guess what? Every single day, you're going to ingest toxins. Yes. You're going to be around toxicity. Yeah. Whether it's spiritual, mental, or internal. Yeah. So now, I, what do I do to detox that? That's why I said we're having spiritually spiritually transmitted diseases. So you, in order to cure the dis-ease, yes. you have to get, you, you, if, you don't, if you don't get rid of the dis-ease, that's how you get a disease. Yes. You know, you take the dash out of dis-ease, it's yes. disease. And we have to be clear that society is literally setting us up to be stressed out, to be upset, to be angry. Even it's in our food, it's in the media, Absolutely. it's in our music. It's literally really crafting Wait, people. Wait, say that again. So, dang, Sarah, this is so powerful. Everything that we've been given, this is why I talk about we've been birthed into a matrix. Yes. We've been manipulated with certain energy and information. If the TV's dead, the food is dead, the religion are dead, the education system dead, the government's dead. Yes. When someone's speaking truth, yeah. if you're used to consuming death, yeah. when you hear life, it's not palatable to you. So I say this, I use this uh, analogy all the time, right? I say sometimes the people that love you the most, they support you the least. And it's not because they don't think you're capable. It's not because they don't believe in you. It's literally because in their way, they're trying to keep you safe in who you are instead of seeing you for who you can be, mm. right? And so inside of, um, I always use the analogy of a map. If our entire lives, as old as we are right now, listening, hearing, watching this podcast, if you've only ever saw a map of the United States, right, we go to school school and we learn about the United States. The globe is a picture of the United States. We've only ever seen a map of the United States. And then you start getting around people that are fulfilled. You start getting around people that are hungry for more. You start getting around people that are conscious. You start getting around people that want more and believe they get to become more. Mm -hmm. That's like Japan. So immediately what happens is we're like, wait, is that even real? Mm -hmm. Right? Because we've never seen it. Mm -hmm. We've never been taught it. But the second that you get around the energy, it's like, oh, okay. There's something new out here. You expand that awareness. And I think it goes back to kind of what we were saying in the beginning about your circle of influence. 
influence, right? There's a reason why mm. it's called a circle of influence. If oh. you are not around the people that are speaking life into you and you're, you're, you're bombarded and caged in oh. by the people that are pacifying you, oh. you will never fully tap Absolutely. into your potential. No, no, no. The, your, your best, the best friend is the one that say, hey, yo, Steve, your breath stinks. Get show together. Hey, hey, yo, hey, yo, bro, you know you're not vibrating like you used to. Man. Yes. You gotta go. So let me, uh, let me say something. We're, the age, you know, the age of Aquarius is what we're in right now, supposedly, apparently, which means we used to be in the age of Pisces, which many are called or few are chosen. Mm. See, that's, let me go back to this chosen thing. Mm -hmm. Many are called, few are chosen. Mm -hmm. Now we live in the age of Aquarius, which is the water bearer, so it cleans everything so everybody can see. The technology age gives everybody the opportunity to see what's going on. And what does that do? Essentially, it lifts the veil. So now, now we, live in a, we live in a space where everybody's called. This is so personal to my life. I just need you to know that right now. Uh, well, that's now. what's up. I can see clearly now. So, but everybody's called, Sarah, but everybody's not going to choose. That's why everyone's yes. not chosen. Yeah. Because you can be speaking the most vivid truth yes. to someone and they're still going to hold on to tradition. Right. You can tell I, somebody about righteousness. They just righteousness. won't acknowledge it though. I think they they're chosen, acknowledge. but they won't acknowledge it. Well, so then that's, it. you can't be chosen if you don't choose. Mm. You can't be chosen if you don't choose, but mm -hmm. you can be called. But it's, that's what I'm saying. If, if the truth is calling you, yeah. but you don't choose the truth, then you ain't chosen. Mm. See, everybody don't have the inventory to be chosen. E e everybody doesn't even want to be chosen. Because, that is a fact. You see what I'm saying? It's like, if I'm telling you Easter bunnies don't lay eggs, chickens lay eggs, but you still celebrate Easter, what are you talk? What are we talking about? <laughs> Like, like it's crazy, but once again, you have people. Uh, uh I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm celebrating Easter by my children, right, right. and we're wondering why we're still in bondage over freaking holidays. Yeah. Like, respell ooh. Santa is Satan. Uh, like, I, I, I don't put no Christmas trees in my house, but hey, that's you. But at the I end feel of the, attacked because I do put a tree up. But don't feel attacked. I don't celebrate Christmas though. But don't I feel do attacked. love a good tree. But I'm don't keep it real. No, what my truth? My truth is mine, right? Yes. And if it, and if I'm and if I plant a seed with you. If you're intelligent enough, you'll say, you know what? Why? Let me go find out why they said that. I know why they say that. Okay. I and, just like a tree. But that's what I'm saying. So at, 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 at the end of the day, you like what you like and you're going to do what you do. Yes. So I can't judge that. Yeah. I'm on my own path. But I also say my tree is up in November. I really just like a tree. Well, your tree is up in November because you're Canadian. That's not the tree. <laughs> So let's not get that mistaken. Okay, all right? okay, that's touche, touche. But, but no, sis, however you, however you process information, yeah. right? I have to ask you, can I shift okay, gears please, a little bit? Please, talk to me. Because I know that you're super conscious. Okay. And I know, you know, I've watched a lot of what you've done. I'm honored to be able to say, like, this is my friend for real. Like, I've seen you do so many incredible things on the planet. But I was watching an interview of yours. Talk to me. That you did on Hardly Initiated. Shout out to you guys. What's up, what's up, fellas? I need my video, by the way. <laughs> yeah, run it up. Tell me, tell me why, Stevie. You said I'm born after I'm born before I have a birth certificate. Mm -hmm. I die before I get a death certificate. Mm -hmm. Why do I need a certificate to validate marriage? Exactly. What does that mean? I, it means exactly what I said. The Creator gave me the right to be born. Yeah. Before this birth certificate, so that means that there was something in the universe. A universal energy that gave Stevie the right to be here. Yes. So if you don't get a certificate, does that mean You're not that married. I'm not existing? Mm. I'm going to die before a death certificate. So my death is going to be here way before they go do that paperwork at whatever office they do that paperwork at. Yeah. So now when you come to marriage. So you don't do you do you believe in marriage? I no, I don't believe in marriage is real. I know marriage is real. Okay, good. Just like I know the creator is real. And see, 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 people get that misconstrued just because I don't want to abide by a, a a standard that was given to me. Yeah. Once again, from someone else, as opposed to me looking at what covenant is. Yeah. Because I I here's my take on it. When you when you consummate with someone, you're considered to be married to them in many, many ways. So you have a bunch of wives then. Absolutely, because that's exactly what it is. But is it your job to provide for these wives? Well, every, there's a difference between having wives and having concubines. There's a difference Ooh. between uh, there's a difference between <laughs> also provision, protection in the physical sense, but also provision and protection in the spiritual sense. Like like we own, we 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 make spiritual when we want it spiritual and then physical when we want physical. Right. Provision is not say, hey, um, I'm paying all the bills. 
Protection is not my guns. No provision is like, hey, babe, don't go get no gas tonight. You take my car, I'll get the gas tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then I prayed for you and I, I, I took care of your health. Mm-hmm. I helped heal you. That's provision and protection. It's a form of it. It's not all of it, though. But so what, but we only get stuck on provision and protection being physical. It's we all of it. When, when you see her to a death do its part, the death is not just a physical death. Johnny got an accident. Mm. It's a spiritual death. Mm. So if the spirit of your relationship is dead, you need to look ex- examine that. Ah. See what I'm saying? So you so, can walk away. Absolutely. Absolutely I can walk away because it's a time and season for everything. Yeah. We only make eternity for what we want to make eternal. Okay. And that's, see, that's how life works. There's a time and season for everything. But we want to make we want to make eternity what we want to make eternal. That's fact. Right. So my child, my son and my daughter will always be my son and my daughter, but yes. they won't always be my child because they're going to be grown one day. They'll always be my son and my daughter, yes. but they won't always be my children. Yes. That's not an eternal thing. Yes. You see what I'm saying? I do. So I think that once again, we get a lot of things misconstrued because we're dealing with an English language that's full of ambiguity. Yeah. The English language is like the serpent. It moves in between the truth and the lie. Yeah. So when you hear truth. It hits you in the face, but once again, many are called, few are chosen. And few are choos- chosen chosen to hear this truth. You, I, for every woman that came on, you know, the comments and was saying something negative, I had many women that were like, "He's absolutely right." Yeah. And and a lot of women who had been married before yeah. in this system, like, you know, he knows exactly what he's talking about because covenant is more important to me than a contract or a license or an agreement. Yeah. I I will say, though, one of the things that I've learned because I, you know, this is my third podcast now and I'm in the country Wayne skits as well. Mm -hmm. And I've gone viral uh, several times and there have been people that in the country Wayne skits, they attack my character. Right. Like my character, Sarah. Mm -hmm. But in in um, when it's the podcast episodes that have gone viral or clips that people have seen, people got something to say and you cannot make everyone happy. But this is what I'm finding. If you stand on the fence, everyone will hate you. You got to stand for something. Yes. You cannot keep flipping back and forth mm-hmm. about what makes sense in that time or in that moment. Like, what is your truth? But if you don't have one, I don't trust you because I don't trust somebody that's one minute. It's like, oh, no, this is the way it's going to be. And then the next minute, it's like, no, that's the way it's going to be. It's like, I don't I don't know how you keep up with yourself, let alone I'm supposed to keep up with you. It's a no that for part. me. So I got to <laughs> ask you, because I feel like, you know, in society, um, we're talking about birthing and, and wombs and we're talking about marriage and all of these different things and people saying what they want to say. I want to know dating for Stevie. Mm. What's that like? Are you single? No, I'm married. I'm married to my purpose. I'm married uh, to my purpose. Is there a woman in there? Is, yeah, absolutely. Is there multiple women in there? It, it's it, absolutely. So you believe absolutely. in polygamy? I, I don't think, but I don't think monogamy is natural. So you believe in polygamy? You know, polygamy. I don't. I don't like even like the word polygamy. Do you practice but, more than one but, partner? But but I'll say this. Uh huh. I don't think that monogamy is natural at all, and I know that it's not natural for a man like me. I can't speak. That for is. Every, I like I that you said a man every, like me. Yeah, I can't speak for every man. Yeah. But I'm just talking about me because all I do, once again, I go back to nature. Uh huh. <clears throat> and when you go to, go to nature, you want to look at. Lions. I knew you were going to use lions as an example. Okay, I can look at eagles. I no, can look you at, can't look at eagles. Yeah, you can. Because eagles are not monogamous. Eagles, no, eagles. Penguins are monogamous. Penguins. Okay, so who wants to walk around looking like that? <laughs> okay, you do that. I, I'm not no. I, you can. You can. You can feel my energy. No, no lion, ain't nothing. Okay. Penguin, it ain't nothing penguin about me. So what I'm saying is that is this is the bigger the bag of the lion, the more lionesses he has. That's a fact. So what I'm saying is that you're a big bad lion. Well, you can I, you said it. You know what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, I'm saying it from the perspective of polygyny is not based on just having as many women as you can. Mm-hmm. It's based on rebuilding a nation. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Because I feel like there's a difference between labeling yourself as a polygamist so that you can have sex with multiple. people. That's what I was just saying. And um, actually, the the art of I, I feel like there's a there's a I don't know, because on the planet, there are more women than there are men. And I'm not saying that I, I don't know. I'm like, look, future husband, um, I'm not a polygamist. I think I'm monogamous. I believe that I'm monogamous, but I don't know for sure. Anyway, the point is program. that, uh, no, it's not a program. No, I'm saying the Let program. Let me tell you me. Let me tell you me, because I feel like if my man, and I've said this before um, multiple times, if my man came to me and said, baby, I want to try something different. Mm-hmm. I love you so much. I'm going to do what we do. But you know what? There's going to be a time where I would like to try something different. I don't know what my answer would be. Mm-hmm. But the logical part, because I've never experienced that. The logical part of me would be like, 
okay because I personally don't want surprises. I don't want to find out afterwards that you've been deceiving me, you've been betraying me, you've been yeah. lying to me. I would rather my man give me the choice to choose you or not. Give me the choice to say this is in alignment with me or it's not. And I feel like too many people now are saying that they're they are um, in if they're interested inside of polygamy, but I don't think that men should be able to say they're a polygamist unless they're actually taken care of because that's the whole thing. The man, <clears throat> the lion is the king of the jungle, right? He takes care of, he protects all his provision over all of those women mm -hmm. is the man inside of that relationship so, doing that so thing. so let's, let's, let once again we live in a society where the average melanated man mm -hmm. makes less than the average melanated woman facts so once again polygyny is not about sex and sexual escapades and orgies and you know all this craziness i agree it's about rebuilding a nation yeah we you do something better than any other woman on the planet. She does something better than you. She does something. So once again, because your anatomy is inner, if you want to know the state of a nation, you have to look at as women. If you want to know the future of a nation, you have to look at as men. Ooh, the, the woman teaches a child how to cleave. The man teaches a child how to leave. Yeah. We just get caught up in our programming. This is why I'm, I want to say programming that you're programmed and that you're whatever sheep. I'm saying the programming of my daughter was two years old and she was pushing around a baby carriage with a little baby in it. That's a fact. So that's a program. Yes. She ought, she wouldn't talk how to be, how to be play a little cars, girl or play with cars or, or be whatever. Like, no, you, you're going to be a mother. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be, you know, and, if, and most women, if they don't achieve that goal, they feel like they're insignificant when that's not true. That's not true at all. I'm so sick and tired of people trying to shame you because you're not married yet. You don't have kids yet. And you <laughs> might be completely happy inside of your life. Let me Absolutely. tell you, for me, I'm a single woman as in single until I'm married. I'm a single woman and I don't have children yet. I'm 35 years old and people will try to make me seem like something's wrong with me. Well, why, mm. you know, you haven't been chosen as a wife. No, I've been chosen as a wife twice, but I walked away. I've been engaged twice. You know what I mean? It's about the alignment. And right now I'm in a space in my life where I am happy with me. I actually enjoy, I will play backgammon on my I, phone. No, I love my, that. I know? love that. No, sis. But that's so important. No, it's very important because I want to go back to something that we said earlier. We're we've been we're we're married when we consummate with one another, and mm -hmm. I don't think we want to have these conversations. You can't put on a white dress and walk down the aisle and think that you you know you're, you're this virtuous woman that, right. when you've been on the ground being being a boss bitch. Oh. Excuse me, can I cur curse? You just did, and I have to curse, and I say this all the time. I curse because our people are under a curse. Yeah, I cuss because we're under a curse, mm. and unfortunately, when I say something as a, as a spiritual man. It's, it's looked at, oh my, I can't, I can't believe he said that, but we listen to the rappers cuss yeah. every goddamn day. Right. So, so what I'm saying is, men and women, we need to have a conversation about how many husbands do you really have on a spiritual level? Ooh. Like, how many people have you really been soul tied to? Ooh. And a soul tie for a woman is different. is different than a man. It's different. You are the carrier of the seed. The child was in me before the child was in you. So, mm. a woman can't move like a man moves because... If you have two or three men and you mess around and get pregnant, it's something is up. Yeah. So how do we figure this out? Yeah. I, I, you can't. I'm, I'm just going back to nature. Yeah. If people want to argue with nature, then that's their that's their prerogative. I can't please everybody or everything. Yeah. But I just know what I've been exposed to in my life, and I've seen you what 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 truth is for me. Yeah. Right. But I also have seen what truth is for others that they don't want to see for themselves. Yeah. Right. And so. Like once we are able to have a candid conversation about this thing as a whole, like covenant, like these different scriptures that we skip over in the Bible yeah. about certain things. And, oh, I hear I hear people always talk about there's not one uh, king relationship in the Bible that worked out. Well, I haven't seen one one on one marriage uh, that worked out in the Bible either. Adam and Eve was one on one. That didn't work out. Job wife. He went against him. I see Isaiah 4 1 says, In that day, seven women should take hold of one man and they should have their own bread and their own clothes. Just let me be called by your name so I can be taken out of reproach. And the reason I say reproach is because women nowadays are women, not you, not women like you, but there's a lot of melanated women that are in reproach right now. Yeah. Every time you turn on a gram, every time you look, go to go to a gym yeah. or go to the grocery store, melanated women, I'm talking to my women, melanated women, we're in reproach. Yeah. So if you're going to be covered, if you're going to have a covering, we need to start having a conversation about how we can let go of tradition and open our hand to truth. Yes. 
That's all I'm saying. And let's have a conversation. And if you decide to stay in that space, that's fine. And I got to say, I, because I do feel that. I feel like if, because I, I work out, you know what I mean? I work out five days a week. I do my best to look my best. I take pride in how I put myself out there. And not because of anyone else, but because how I feel about me. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things I'm never going to post on social media. Bingo. There are certain poses I'm never going to do on social media. There are certain things I'm never going to say on a public platform. Why? Because of the standard that I hold myself to. Now, not to say that someone else's standard is better or worse or good or bad. Y'all do you. I'm going to do me. Mm -hmm. Right. And so inside of that, I, I agree. There was this quote that I saw one time of it's really hard to be a queen in a world full of full of bad bitches. It's really hard. And I find for me, it's like I could have, I could have, look, I could have 3 million followers like this. You know what I mean? Right. And I'd have a bunch of people that like everything, but who is following my lead? Right. You know what I mean? Where am I leading right. you to? Right. What, what, what influence am I casting over the people that I have? And so I have to ask you because I do feel like I really want to have this conversation and we're getting close on time here. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I really wanted to talk to you about is this whole feminine man and masculine woman energy inside mm -hmm. of the melanated community. Wow. I don't know about you, but I personally feel like in this generation right now, a lot of these melanated men are super soft. Absolutely. What's Absolutely. up? Uh, let, let's, go back, let's go back to birth. Oh. So when a woman is pregnant with a boy or girl, excuse me, if she's consuming high fructose corn syrup, soy, and aspartame, mm. if she's pregnant with a boy, that Soda, boy comes out feminine. Food. That's high fructose corn syrup. If you drink your, 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 your favorite ginger ale, high fructose corn syrup is in it. Your favorite juices, some of them, yeah. high fructose corn So if, if you're consuming this. This is scientifically proven. This is scientific. They, go look it up. They've done studies. High fructose corn syrup, soy, and aspartame. If you're consuming that and you're pregnant with a boy, he's going to come out feminine. If you're pregnant with a girl, he's gonna come out, she's going to come out masculine. OK, so when people say they're born a certain way, we have to start looking at why, why would why would someone tell you they're going to change your genetics? They're telling you in the food genetically modified organisms. I'm yeah. going to change your genetics. We, we're not listening to people telling you the truth right in your face. Ooh. So if we don't want to hear truth, we're stuck on habits. tradition and have. Well, my grandma ate pork, so I'm going to do my thing. Yeah. Your grandma ate from the farm. You eat from the pharmacy. Oh, Pause. Okay. Pause. There's a difference between the farm and the pharmacy. Woo! So and we don't we don't want to over. I made a statement about the graveyard shift. There's studies about when the sun goes down, we should go down. So the graveyard shift. I heard Dick Gregory say this. You shouldn't you shouldn't work in the graveyard shift because you're gonna go to the grave. Yeah. Everybody oh, heard everybody heard graveyard shift and went against that. They didn't hear me say. That when the sun goes down, we're supposed to go down. Yeah. Circadian rhythm. Yes. We don't even want to have a conversation about this. We want to hear what we want to hear what we want to hear and disagree so much. But there's studies about the graveyard shift. People who work the graveyard shift are more prone to disease and more prone to die earlier than people who work when the sun goes up and when the sun goes down. Mm. So why are we arguing, y'all? It, it's just that our people are so idiotic sometimes that they don't want to hear it. And that's what I'm saying. You can, you, can, you can have many different gyms. People rather go buy gyms than hear them. Ooh, they, 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 they not you know, implement them. Not implement them. It's like I will buy it to say that. Some people, that's a whole other. We ain't got, we ain't got time for that today. Okay, we don't have but, time But the feminine man and the yeah. feminine woman, if the average handshake of a woman is stronger than the average handshake of a man right now. Mm -hmm. Right now, 2023. Oh, yeah. The average handshake. So that's letting you know that everything is inverted. Now mm -hmm. women are acting like men and men are acting like women. Yeah. So that means we're out of order. Yeah. So how do we get back in order? So we start to change what we consume, not just in our food, but in our, in our, in our, what we, in every gate, in our ear gate, in our eye gate, in our mouth gate, and on our skin. Because whatever you put it on you, you should be able to put in you. Yeah. Right? But everything we've been consuming has taken us away from nature. Yeah. Everything that's natural is now uncommon and everything that's unnatural is common. Yeah. So so you can take that for how you want to take it, but that's the reality. Okay, but this is the thing for me. This is my qualm, okay? Mm -hmm. I feel as though 
and not with my experience, because honestly, I'm having an incredible dating experience. I won't lie. Um, but for a lot of women, I hear a lot of horror stories, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like the men in this day and age, they expect a woman to follow their lead, but you're not going anywhere. You're not Correct. even clear on the destination you're trying to get Absolutely. to. But yet you want me to just say, okay, I'm getting in the passenger seat. You could have had every intention of going to New York. Meanwhile, this person's just driving on the road with no map and no clear idea of where to go. So uh, what do you say to the men? Because, and also let's not forget the fragility of the male ego, right? So now you got to take into account that there are men that have no idea with where they're going. Mm -hmm. They have the most fragile ego. So the second that you start to question or, you know, for me, I'm a seed planter. I learned that from my mother. I don't really question or like, I'm not a, a big this. Mm -hmm. If when I respect you, um, there's no reason Correct. to do that. And I respect people. So there's never going to be a reason for me to be like blunt or like disrespectful. Um, but how do you even, how do you even how, like, how, wh what is the solution? Cause I'll be hearing these stories, Stevie, and they are crazy. The, the stories people hear are because you attract who you are. Now people always say, well, I'm a healer. So I, I attract people. That's BS to me. You literally attract who you are. And even if you are a quote unquote, a self healer, or whatever that is, if your discernment is out of tap and out of whack, and if you're not in balance, then you're going to allow someone or something into your life that mm. you don't want. Mm. So if I'm dealing with adversity and, 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 and if I'm dealing with, um, uh, what, what's the word called? Anxiety and depression, mm. and I'm calling myself want to be connected to somebody, mm. I can be who I am, mm. but there I'm going to let someone trick me mm. because I'm not grounded. So now you'll mess around and be convicted in who you are, conscious and beautiful and everything, but you allow this dude to snake in because you didn't have a discernment. Your discernment was not on point because you were dealing with anxiety and depression from whatever you're dealing with in your life. So you attract who you are. Now, if you don't have the discernment to... I feel attacked. If you don't have the discernment to... Um, Get yourself away and, and you hear certain things. There's certain signs that we all hear and yeah. people show. And if you in discern, Ooh. if you're in a discerning state, you're at, oh man, no, nah, I'm straight, bro. I'm good. I, like, I, like at this point, I'm going to tell you this. As a man, I wouldn't even date a woman who eat McDonald's or Chick-fil-A. Oh, I vibrate what about that their high. fries? I, I, I vibrate that high. Well, Chick-fil-A fries are out? I, they out. Chick-fil-A fries I'm are telling, out? I'm telling you the reason the why. Fries are I'm just telling you, as good as they are, that with Polynesian, the salad that no Polynesian used to hit. Yo. I'm just telling you what I know because, once again, when you start to vibra get to a certain level of vibratory energy, yeah. you're going to, it, there's certain things, one little thing would let you see who a person really is. Oh, man. And now you like, I can release that. Yeah. I'm gone. I could be attracted to you. I could think you're freaking amazing, intelligent, yeah. Yeah. all that. But hold up. There's certain energy that you're going to project and... After a while, if you squeeze somebody, you'll be able to see what's inside. I, I promise you. You know, it's funny. I feel, the reason why I said I feel attacked is because as an adult, um, I have great dating experiences. But I will say that at probably my year of 34, mm -hmm. I'm 35 years old, like I said, my 34th year was one of the most challenging years I've ever had in my life. And as a result, I chose a relationship that was... I, I, I'm not, I, I look back and I'm like, how did you even... Like what in your, like, mm -hmm. how did this, this don't make no sense mm -hmm. for you, Sarah, the mm -hmm. way that you hold yourself, the way that you show mm -hmm. up, the way that the, the things that you went through, all of these different things. It was like, this is not a reflection of you. And so inside of it, I knew that number one, I was overwhelmed. Mm. Number, number two, I was, I was, um, I was trying to figure things out. It was like, it was like the year of discombobulation. Man, and when you don't, deep. when you're not grounded, it's easy to be like, oh, well this okay, you know, this feels good at the moment or this, this sounds good. Or on top of, you know, all the things that were coming in at the time, it was just literally like, wow. And in hindsight, 2020, on top of that, my dad is battling his second battle with cancer. Mm. And so I was in a rush, you know, I, and if we, if we move too fast, if we rush, if we rush our process, we often ruin it, right? It's Absolutely. like gestation. There's a gestation process that has to happen for pregnancy. Babies need to get to 40 weeks, period. If they mm -hmm. don't, there's a risk, mm -hmm. right? And so Plants. inside, yes, everything, yeah. everything has its, its time of gestation. And so for me, I had to realize where am I trying to rush my gestation? Where am I trying to demand God, give me the baby and I'm not even pregnant yet? Says, let me, let me interject because even as a man, I felt that. I, I remember I was 30, I was 32 when my daughter was born, 31, 32. And I, I, I felt 
a sense of anxiety because I had friends that had children that were teenagers. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, no, I don't even have a child yet. And it's like, you, I had to recognize, well, me to have my first child at 32, uh, I'm different than what my parents were. Yeah. I have more maturation. I yes. have more life experience. Yes. I, so, so my parents were 17, 18 when they had me. Mm. So we're trying to rush something sometimes. And we're, we're feeling like anxiety about, oh, you're beautiful. You, you're successful. Why you ain't married? I was getting the same thing. Yeah. Like people will try to project their fears on you. Yes. Well, ain't nothing wrong with me. I'd rather be single and, and, comp- and, and I'm talking about enjoy yes. than to be married and miserable. Period. And you know what? I feel like so many people want to push the label. I know so many married, miserable people. I don't want that. It's easy to get married. By the way, it's also easy to be in a relationship, but it is challenging to find someone that is aligned. And I will wait. I will be patient. So ships, I love, because you know I love words. Yes. Ships bring things to and from. Yes. So right now we're having a fellowship. Yes. We're bringing information back. Yes. Relationships are very important. Yes. Because if the things on my ship don't relate to the things on your ship, we can't have a relationship. Yeah. What if the parts on my ship don't connect to the parts on your ship? Yeah. We can't have a partnership. Yeah. What if the things on my ship don't work in accordance to what yours are working with? We can't even have a worship. Period. So what I'm saying about it is... When that's why I say you you attract who you are, and I, I'll say this again: the only reason you don't have what you want is because you're not what you want mm. yet. See what I'm saying? So we want certain things, but we really haven't made that true transition to be that inside first before it manifests in the outward. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying that about you or me or whatever, but I'm just saying that's how life works. Yeah, that's the power of manifestation. Yes. that's the power of vibrating. Uh, at a certain frequency yes. where you attract the energy that's meant for you, yes. right? And I'm not even talking about biblical because, like I said, I don't think marriage is based upon – I don't look at marriage based upon how I used to look at it when I was growing up. I, yeah. I look at marriage now based upon uh, – Marriage is not my, marriage is a con, it's a connection and it's a covenant yeah. more than it's an agreement and a certificate. Yeah. You well, know? I do because when I was in the space of having, you know, for for me, it ended up being get, slick toxic relationship. Mm-hmm. It's because marriage wasn't about marriage for the 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 essence of marriage. It was about my dad walking me down the aisle. Right. And so it's literally like if my dad, I like my, we were on a timeline. We're on, mm. we, I gotta, I gotta get down the aisle. I gotta get down the aisle. And this is the thing. Anybody, because they try to tell women, you should be married and a mother, oh, married and a get, mother. Oh, you need to be good. married I'm, and a mother. That's what I'm saying about that programming with but my that daughter. Was, that used to be mm-hmm. me. And so I have been engaged twice. And then I came to my senses and was like, no, this isn't for me. But you have to be careful what you're listening to because anybody can give you marriage and a child. Anybody, right? But if you're after happiness, then happiness will breed marriage and children. Come on. Or it'll breed a solid relationship or companionship or whatever ship it is that I gotta you're say, I gotta say, I I love this and I I wanna interject this this point. Yeah. Marriage is spiritual first, cultural second. Yes. I'm gonna say that again. It's spiritual first. Yes. So so you and whoever you, you end up quote unquote marrying and however you, that goes. Y'all are married before you even walk down the aisle. Y'all are married before a certificate. You're married before your parent. Like there was a there was a certain connection there, spiritual, mm-hmm. before any of that other physical stuff happened. Yeah. Because think about the certificate is physical. Yes. The ring is physical, and yes. the ceremony is physical. Yes. So if we know that the most important things on the planet are in- invisible, then why we put so much onus on the physical? Yeah. And the visible. See, see, and and that's why I'm I'm so convicted on this thing. Yeah. Because I recognize that the most important world is the invisible world. Yes. You know. Yes, I agree, and it's so funny. I was just I just did a video on um, Instagram, and it when I tell you, there's a thousand comments, left and right. We got all side and the middle. We got every side on there, and I was talking about um, how women never know what to say, like what they bring to the table. Mm. And for me, it's not about the physical, right? It's literally, there are so many intangible things that a woman brings to the table. It's the essence that a woman brings that makes a man want to be better. Feminine, true feminine energy makes masculine feel, like makes masculine hungry, makes masculine go out and get it. The way that you want to increase and improve inside of your life when you have tapped into the true feminine. And by the way, a true feminine woman will also allow her 
your man to drop into his feminine also because there's Come a on. level of vulnerability that's you better, required. You better say there's that. a level of safety inside of being able to be all sides of you. And we are all yin and yang. We're all masculine and feminine. Every single one of us have both, right? And so I feel like inside of um, inside of that conversation and inside of like the relationships and all of these things, we have to be mindful of yeah. who are we being to attract that kind of partner. Right. Look, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think we beat ourselves up and are like, man, I attracted this person. So, you know, I'm bad or, you know, whatever. No, it's just mm -mm. like you just weren't. You You're just, best self. You just weren't yeah, in a place to be able to, to see clearly. The veil wasn't lifted. Yes. But I want to go back to the lioness thing when talking about divine feminine energy. The lioness hunts. Yeah. Even though the, the lion is the more masculine. Yeah. The lioness hunts. Yes. The, we keep the hyenas off y'all. Mm -hmm. Right? So once again, we are in a space where because we're not in alignment with our assignment and in alignment with nature, the mm -hmm. natural order of things, mm -hmm. that's why everything is so discombobulated. Mm -hmm. So once we get in alignment and once, you, once people who hear certain messages, a celestial message, a mindset mm -hmm. that, that's dipped, then your tribe will show up. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I always say your tribe is your vibe. Period. Your tribe will show up when they hear you, yes. when they see you, when yes. they feel you. Yes. And as long as you're moving and operating like that, that's how I know um, when I'm in certain spaces, I know I'm like, boy, I'm in alignment. Ooh. I'm in alignment. Like like right now, SAG, we're on strike, yeah. right? As actors, we're, yeah. on, we're on strike. So the... I had to leverage my resourcefulness as yep. opposed to my resources. Mm. A lot of people lean on resources, mm. but you got to lean on your resourcefulness. Yes. And now the creativity that I have in the, from, from being placed in a more uncomfortable space, yeah. that gives me a chance to squeeze on growth. I'm yes. like, whereas in typically I'd be like, God dang, man, what's going on? Now my mindset is like adversity. Bring your ass here. Let's go. Because I know adversity doesn't just reveal my character, but it builds my character. Yes. You see what I'm saying? On. So that that that's why when you start to vibrate in, in these spaces and you start to have these conversations, yeah. and you and you get around other people who are dealing with the same things as you. Yes. Because when you get to a certain level, it's thin, thin air up here. Yeah. So because it's such rare air up there, you're not gonna run into so many people that vibrate. You're gonna have a limited amount of men and women that you might be attracted to. Mm-hmm. Both on a on a on a man from a male male perspective for you on an intimate side, but even from female friends, yeah, they're just not gonna be able to vibrate that high because their vibration is still lower than yours, and, and maybe in that area they might be higher in another area. Right. I'm so convicted and so thankful that the more I know, the more I know what I don't know. Come on. So it keeps me open to receive more. Yes. That I, makes you multidimensional. I live by that. I've like literally, so you know, I have three degrees and an honorary doctorate, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like I've done all the things. I've traveled all over the world. I've read the books. I've been in the seminars. I've gone to the classes. And the more that I learn, the more that I know, I really don't know anything. Absolutely. There's so, I live by that. I, I did a that. commencement speech um, this, this year. Come on, commencement speech. Yeah. And, and I told the students, I said, it's one thing to have a PhD, but no G-O-D. Oh, it's one thing to have a master's degree, but no master of your knowledge of yourself or yeah. the other master. Yeah. And right. Right. You didn't get your bachelor's degree by yourself. No. So there's a difference between having a degree and a decree. Oh, see, your decree is it, it, it can't be are. it can't be substantiated by a degree. No. Or a diploma. It's an essence. It can't be substantiated by your bank account. Yes. Because because so many people walk in. In, in, the, in the midst of worrying about paper instead of purpose. Mm. You chasing paper, but your purpose is more important. And if I'm always chasing my purpose, paper is going to come because paper is nothing but energy. Every single time quick and in a hurry. Absolutely. All right, so All we right. have to shift gears because we're getting to the end. Okay, let's and do it. And this is the portion of the show where we have it's giving versus it's giving. So something positive versus it's negative. Okay. In your mind, what starts to happen, right? Okay. So let's say... If you are in the mall with your girl or mm -hmm. your your wife or come one on, of your wives, man. come you on, say, come on, you so messy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 throw that yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and you go into the Louis Vuitton store and she asks you to buy her a three thousand dollar purse. You tell her no, and she calls you broke in public. Mm. In your mind, do you say it's giving ungrateful piece of you ain't never gonna hear from me ever again in your life, mm -hmm. or it's giving, damn, I really spoiled you. Mm. 
My last name is Bags, so I don't really I don't really go buy a lot of bags. I go get the bag. And so if you so I would go with the other one. It's giving your spoil. Yeah. To me. Yeah. And not that I spoiled you. Uh it's giving that it's giving that you're spoiled. That's why you even had the audacity to ask me that. Ooh. Oh. You see what I'm saying? That ain't yeah. have nothing to do with me spoiling yeah. you. The the entitlement. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um another one. Okay. So you're out with um, your boys, mm-hmm. and um, you're out with your boys at a at a at a club in the line in mm-hmm. the line to get in. I know you don't do line. That's not gonna be me. Uh, I don't do clubs. Damn, a line. I don't need to do okay, a club. Okay, okay. Well, let's say. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Well, let's say that you're out, you're at the gym. Uh huh. Okay. You're at the gym with two of your boys. All right. And uh, there's a really beautiful woman that walks in, okay. and one of your friends is trying to get her attention, but she's looking at you. Right. And so for whatever reason, the boy that's trying to get her attention checks you for no reason in front of her. In your mind. Uh (laughs) It's giving Negro. We about to brawl right here. Right. Or it's giving. I'm going to give you the death stare, but I'm going to talk to you about this later. It'll it'll probably be more on the latter side. But but once again, I can honestly say like anybody who I consider my boy. We're not even gonna be on that type of time. Period. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I don't, that's like, I, like, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you, they not gonna. We're not even gonna be on that type of time. Yeah. There, there's, there's. I live in a life of abundance, not lack. Yeah. I, I don't, have, I don't live in a life of lack on anything. I live in a life of abundance. Okay. And so, everything is is plentiful. Okay. So I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Hey, hey, bro, if you wanted that bag, go try to get shoot. it. Yeah, shoot your up. shot, baby. Yeah. But she looking at me. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, you know, that's what I'm saying. She, that, that she'll, she'll probably read that energy, you know. But most of the people I connect with, because the only thing better than one lion is two. Yeah. And so when you surround yourself with other lions, you know, and other people that are on their same level, then now it's, it's no competition. It's only compliment me, not compete with me. That's true. And what I will say is because there are a lot, a lot of lions out here, but you have to be mindful of the lions in the wild and the lions in the zoo. Oh, come on now. <laughs> those are different Dang. kinds of lions. No, that's real. Because a, a lion in the wild knows how to go out and get it. They understand that they have to work together. They understand that we all got to eat when we all get the, the, the prey, right? Yes. A lion in the zoo is so used to looking like a lion, roaring come like the lion, now, waiting for the food to come. No, that's good. They think they're the king of the and queen of the jungle, but really, if they were put in the wild, they would never make it. Yep. So some people might look the part, but they don't have the essence of mm-hmm. who it actually is. Yes. So we got to be mindful of that too. Don't get fooled by the lions in the zoo. No, that's real. That's why there's a saying that in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what that means is if you can't open your third eye to discern what type of lion you're around, mm-hmm. you'll never be a king. Ooh, say that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so like to your point also about lion, you can never you can never domesticate, emasculate, or castrate a real lion. Ooh, you can emas- you can, it would you die can, first. You can castrate or emasculate or domesticate a fake lion Ooh. and put him, but you can't put a real lion in That's a cage. That's a fact. You can't put an eagle you can't stop an eagle from spreading his wings. No. That's just not going to happen. Did you see Did you see the video? There's a video on TikTok that I, or not on Instagram that I saw where a bird tried to, the eagle was in a cage, right? Mm-hmm. Wild eagle. They caught it in a cage. It was probably a six foot tall uh, cage. And this stork looking bird tried to take the eagle's food. And the first time the stork missed it, right? And so it's like looking like, how can I get into the cage to try to take your food? Then the eagle got into position. And sometimes we don't realize that we're over, the, 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 the opponent is over here plotting on, oh, I just got to get this the right way so I could take what's not mine. Mm. But when you're getting into position, nobody can take from you what's already yours. Come on. When that stork tried to get into the, the fence quickly, that eagle grabbed his whole face like his whole long neck was in the claw of the eagle, tore that stork up. And it was those, a wrap. When those talons click. Oh, it's a wrap. <laughs> that's why click, I know it. It's it. That's it's it. Over. It's a wrap. So, so, so really, that's it. Okay, so I want to hear. I don't know if she's open to it. But she be asking some good, good, good. It's giving statements. She is. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ruin it. But I will yeah. say I have a a, a guest co-host that will be coming onto the show. Oh, that's gonna be good. And when I tell you she is a serial entrepreneur, she is a boss babe. She mm-hmm. is stunning on the inside and out. She is a business owner. She is a healer. She is so many different things. I ain't gonna give it away who it is, y'all, because y'all gonna see her on this show. Um, but I want to know. She's here today uh-huh. in the background. I want to know. Can I say your name? 
Miss Helen, mm. follow her sacred secret with two T's. The official sacred secret. She's so poetic. Um, I got a yeah, snap. Yeah, I got a snap. Real, I got a snap. If you don't know, you better find out. Yeah. Okay. Um, t- we also happen to be related, but that is like the least of her successes. <laughs> this girl is out here killing it. Um, Miss Helen, do you have any it's giving that you wanna you wanna ask Stevie? We got time for one more before before our last before we close it out. So, like the questions. That you're Hi, beautiful. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Stevie, my question for you would be: mm-hmm. um, Say you're in public at a an event where you're speaking at, okay. and, and one of your wives. Oh my gosh, y'all keep coming. With this. Okay, go ahead. Well, I heard you say you have plural wives, right? I said I'm married to my purpose. Yeah, but you also said that you have. I don't believe in monogamy. Yes. We so, but go right ahead. Y'all go, ahead. y'all go we ahead. Y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead. Right. right. We're going to go. We're going to let you be great. Right. So, you which one of your girls, and. Um, <laughs> You know you're 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 in a speaker mode, so you're in presenting mode. Your your character is important at this time, mm-hmm. um, and then you know you see somebody trying to holler at her and mm-hmm. disrespecting her, kind mm. of right in front of you, like oh. he's like he's like hollering at her, but very disrespectfully, like trying to grab on her, being a little bit mm-hmm. you know extra, not yeah. not king like, right, not good, right. Not good. So in that moment, do you? Do you address this other masculine energy? It's giving it's address giving, him? It's giving I address this energy or it's giving my girl better know how to handle that situation. Oh. Yeah, like I, I think that we live in a world in a time where uh, if I'm going to take it there and I'm going to risk everything, mm-hmm. then it got to be worth it. Mm. You feel me? So mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think a situation like that is worth it because I don't think I would be connected to a woman that wouldn't be able to diffuse a situation because she yeah. knows what's at stake. Know, what's at, at stake? Yeah. So she, number one, I think certain women carry an energy where you're not even going to have a man approach you disrespectfully just off the That's energy facts. you possess. Right. And I try to get women to understand that because when you dress in a certain way or you look in a certain way, men are going to... Uh, Address you a certain way. You see what I'm saying? And yes. so, so yeah, I think I, w- I, would, I would leave it that way because when you're talking about life and death situations, that's a whole different conversation mm-hmm. because, yeah. because mm-hmm. when you got mm-hmm. family involved and your children or things like that are involved, now it's all the way, it's all the way up. Yeah. You know, and, and, and my, I got my stones on, but that's going to realign a chakra. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. feel me? Like, yeah. and, I, and I, for me, I always tell people this. My Bible is for those that do believe, and my gun is for those that don't believe. Ooh. Ooh. Bars, thank you for that question, <laughs> Helen. Yes. Guys, we're going to have her on. Get this face, get this vibe, all of these things, because we got to wrap up. Thank you so much, yes, beautiful, for welcome. joining. Thank you. Guest Thanks, host Helen. coming in. Guest host she popping snapped. up. You she feel snapped. me? Yeah, she, she, snapped. She, came, she came with the real... So this is my final question. All right. Um, so I, I, I really believe in healing. Everything on this podcast is about transformation, evolution, healing. Like your words are literally the, the, the principle, the foundation of what it is that is being created through its giving. Mm-hmm. It's giving all the things. And um, my question for you is what book? I'm an avid reader and I mm. believe in reading and I believe in learning and I believe in growth. And sometimes you got to learn from different spaces, right? So what book has changed your life the most and why? I'm going to give you two books. Okay. I'm going to give you the first book I would say is the Bible. I because, knew you were going to say that. Because that's the book that I was able to glean some information from yeah. and pull out the allegory, the folklore, yeah. and be able to see it for what it is. Mm-hmm. I don't make it literal when it makes sense or figurative when it makes sense. I just take it for what it is. Yeah. Um, but the the second book I would say will be my book, my second book that oh, I wrote. You better talk Woke. your stuff. Yeah. You, yeah. You better. No, for real. So my first book is called Greater Than the Game. Mm-hmm. I and then that. I seen the evolution to when I wrote the book Woke, mm-hmm. which is a dictionary for the conscious mind. What What that book has shown me is how I've continued to evolve even beyond where I wrote that book. Yeah. And I wrote this, the first book. Yeah. Right? Like, from the first to the second book, I was like, wow. Yeah. That's a totally different dude. Yeah. And then, even inside of rereading Woke, it's like watching a movie 
when you were a teenager and watching it as an adult, you yes. pull so many different things from it that you didn't even see. Yeah. So I wrote some things down that when I read it later, it gave me even more growth. Come on. And, and because it made me sharpen my own tools. I'm like, bro, if you're saying this, yeah. you got to live this, homie. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yes. like you got to really be what you saying you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. So I think, you know, my book, Woke, it, it, it's, it's taught me so many different things. And when I go back and read it, I'm like, wow. Sometimes I'm like, dang, I can't believe I even said that. Yeah. Because if you're in a rocky space in life, you you don't even know that when you, you wrote that you were, yourself, yeah, yeah, you was man, you were vibrating high when you wrote that, but now you're feeling kind of down today, or you, so that that's it. If I want to go outside of that, I'm gonna give you one more. Okay. I would say, uh, I love, I I just love the Four Agreements, and that, that's that's a, one that's of my a, favorite books. I do too, and I, because I think the Four Agreements gives you an opportunity to really do self inventory. Yeah. When people do things, it's not because of them, it's because of you. Yeah. When you say you're going to do something, show up. Do it. So, I, see, I over-deliver and under-promise. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Absolutely. When you over-deliver and under-promise, your face going to always be clean. Yeah. You know, and so, um, yeah, I, I, I love that book. And I think, you know, taking principles of, of those different books is great. But I think the greatest book is the book of life. Yeah, which it, teaches you every day. It teaches you every day. If you're willing to listen... The book of life teaches you because the greatest, the greatest uh, form of communication is nonverbal. Yeah, so true. You can, I can read your energy based on how you're looking. Yes. You don't have to say one word. Yep. So your vibration speaks for you before you say one word. Every time. So that, that, that will be, that's what would be my three right there. I love that. Well, we're definitely going to connect woke down in the comment section. We're going to have all of Stevie's handles down in the comment section. Make sure to follow this guy. And yeah. Stevie, I got to say, thank you, number one. Like, we just, on the fly, we're like, we going to shoot because we're going to wrap. And literally, I think we, we could talk about everything oh, all man, day. All day. Literally, it could be 18 different episodes that we yep. do. We, we got to have it We can do Oh, my uh, gosh. Uh, all the, yeah. I like you said politics. Yep. <laughs> For real, though, it. yes. <laughs> But really and truly, I feel like we gotta we gotta bring you back on the show. No, I know absolutely. everyone is gonna agree that we gotta have you back on the show. Um, but we're gonna connect all of your platforms below. And I just okay. want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's giving blessed. Yeah, it's giving yeah. renewed. It's giving thankful. It's giving grateful. <laughs> it's giving no, I, I'm proud of you, and, and keep doing thank what you're you. doing because I think you are a blueprint for the the, the sisters to see. You, you know what this thing really looks like, and how you can take your beauty. And, 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 and your opulence and, and your uh, virtue and let that lead as opposed to being a boss bitch and a diva. I think, I, think, I think we need more virtue and we need more opulence and more regal mm. out of our women instead of more diva and boss bitch. And, and for me, when I see that, when I think of that, I see you. Thank so you. keep going. <laughs> keep going, sis. For real. <laughs> It's real. Thank you. I need a, I need a something. I need yeah, a hug. Yeah, oh We're going to hug when we stand up. That but part. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of It's Giving. Let me know in the comments, what was this episode giving for you? It's Giving. Let us know. Thank you again, Stevie Bags. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace and power.